All right, guys, so it is that time again where I'm gonna be making another lure. So this is the first lure I ever made. Uh, it came out all right. It could be way better. I'm not expecting greatness on my first lure, but uh, I do hope it gets better, especially on this second one. But on this jerk bait here, I had problems making a lip. So for this one, I was like, you know what? Let's avoid the lip and make a lipless crankbait. It's perfect, no lip, no problems, right? So today we're making a crankbait, lipless crankbait. So I got this guy here, this Cordell. I'm gonna be tracing this guy on some paper, onto the wood, cutting out the wood, and then shaping and making my very own lipless crankbait. So let's get started. So in the last video, I carved the wood with a knife and pretty much just sanded it all down. And in that video, I said I do not have a bandsaw. And after I posted that video, my buddy Devin called me and said, hey, I have a bandsaw, come and get it. <laughs> I was like, thanks man, a little late. But uh, I do plan to make a lot more lures. I want, I think it's fun and I wanna make a lot more. So uh, I went and grabbed the bandsaw today from Devin and it should be a whole lot easier to cut the wood this bandsaw should save a whole lot of time for me. So, Also, I went ahead and changed the tail design just a little bit. I made it not so rounded, kind of gave it some shape. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Also told Devin if I come back missing any fingers, it's all his fault. So, Finger check, I think we're good. Alright, so I'm actually going to be cutting two pieces out just like this. And that way, uh, I want to have to split in half while it's all together. So there is the first piece. Now I just need to cut out one more piece. Both the sides, let's see if they match up. Doesn't have to be perfect, just good enough for me to be able to sand it down. I think we did it. So I just drew where I want the line tie and the treble hooks to be. And another reason why I split this in half is because I want to, this is a pretty thin lure. I probably could have drilled a hole and stuck the weight inside there, but I figured I would split it apart, use a Dremel, and get the weight exactly where I want it. And also, I can cut out a little chamber for like little BBs to make it rattle. So that's kind of the plan I'm going with here. Uh, just kind of going with the flow, but uh, I think we can do it. So we know where our line ties are gonna be. Now we need to figure out where the weight can be. We have all this room to mess with. So we need to fit a weight, probably multiple weights. I'm gonna throw in two. I really need this guy to sink, so if it doesn't sink, then we're kinda of screwed. I want a sinking lipless crankbait because I fish a deep reservoir, so. Shoot, the, if I make the cavities for the weights bigger, they might actually rattle. Hmm. So instead of BBs, I'm just gonna leave the gap for the weights a little bit bigger, and that will be the rattle. It may completely destroy the baits, I don't know. I'm experimenting here, never done this before, but that's what we're gonna do. So I went and test fitted the weights and I also got some white paint on there to be able to trace or know where I need to drill the holes on this side. So I need to do a few more clean up areas here, and then we can start doing this one. I think all the time I just saved using this Blade Runner, I just lost in grinding out these cavities. All right, here we go. Yes, all right. We made the cavities big enough. It's more of a hard knock than a rattle. I just got the two pieces super good together and I am carving it down to make both sides match, just to make the sanding a whole lot easier for me. 
way less sanding. So my last lure, I did not sand it very good. It is very bumpy. You can tell in the paint. It does not look very good. So on this one, I'm making sure it is sanded really good. I just hit it with this 60, and now I am going with this 600, uh, just to smooth it out as much as I can, because I want this thing to look pretty good. It already looks a whole lot better with just the 60, but now I'm hitting it with the 600. All right, so now I'm going to draw the lines where I need to carve the edges, and then after that, we can go round them off. This one's actually looking so much better than the first one. It's insane. Sanding is everything. <laughs> so I got the edges shaved down. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sand all this round. I wish I had a vise to put this in and uh, loop the sandpaper around. It would be a whole lot faster, but I don't have a vise, so uh, I'm just gonna have to do it by hand. I guess the next thing I need is a vise, huh? If any of my friends have a vise I could borrow. <laughs> All right, so here is the bait after sanding and it looks freaking awesome. It looks so, so, so much better than the original one here. The original one, you can see all the little divots and holes. This one will not have that. I'm gonna go ahead and seal this bad boy. We'll throw it in the sink, and see if it sinks how I want it to. All right, the moment of truth. Will it sink? I don't think it will, but uh, let's see what happens. Oh no. Okay. This drop shot weight that is long and cylinder-ish, and that will fit in the hole. I did just make this huge gouge in it, but I can super glue that back on. But there's the hole we made. Here is the drop shot weight. Boom, look at that. All right, more weight successfully added. Let's see if it sinks. Oh, it sinks. It sinks kind of fast. So I just tested the Cordell and it has a fast fall rate too. Also, it falls nose first, I noticed. When this bait falls, it hits the nose. My bait did not do that. Um, see, we'll try it, see what happens. All right, I am ready to drill the holes for the Lantas. I already got them punched. All right, time to make the tie wires. Once again, good old paper clips. I need to go to the hardware store and get some actual good wire, but. For now, paper clips it is. I think I pretty much mastered everything else besides like the wire tie, but I'm just not using the right wire. Like I said, I'm gonna go get some right wire soon. And the wire ties will actually look pretty good and circle. These paper clips are not it, man. They're not it. Just use this flat round grinder here to drill out little sockets for the eyes. And I got some eyes here, and that Dremel bit was just perfectly. It might have been the bigger one, but uh, should fit that small one just right. So, all right, there is the eyes. It's all sealed. I got the rings all taped up. It is time to paint. So on the last lure, I just did a very basic white with a black shad dot. This time I want to try to get more technical. Uh, I suck at this. I, this is my second time doing it, so I'm not good, but I want to try see what we can do I'm gonna start with black. So on the first time I did this I think I was spraying way too much paint and way too close So this time I'm farther back and not spraying nearly as much paint and it is working so much better 
All right, so I just got the lure wrapped in this, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a screen. But my concern is this is really thin, super thin, probably way too thin. So I gotta be really careful. So here is what I plan. The top is going to stay black. The bottom is all gonna be white, and then the white will fade into the black, and that will leave the scales, hopefully. Again, this mesh is super small and it may not work, but uh, that's what I'm gonna try. If I mess it up, I'll just go back over it with black and restart. Not bad. Looks pretty dope. Uh, I'm gonna hit up the bottle with just white without the screen. Make it all white so there's no scales down there. Dude, that's freaking sick. Okay. My line running through the middle ain't perfect, but nothing I can do about it now. That looks freaking awesome, man. Alright, second side is ready to be painted. I'm trying to get this side a little bit more cleaner. Alright, there is the second side. Okay, so Chartreuse is a awesome color on my local lake. So, I cut out a little stencil here. Just a little arrow or a line. And I want to place that on the eye. Right at the eye. And have that come back to the tail. I just got this fluorescent yellow here. I'm going to call it Chartreuse. Oh, sheesh, sheesh. Yeah, that's sick. That is freaking sick. Yeah, boy. All right, last thing I'm gonna do on this side is add a little black shad dot. There's a very small, subtle dot. And I just use the end of a drill bit to do it. Sometimes you need that little dot right there. Dude, that looks so freaking sick. Ah, oh, it's badass. I'm actually really enjoying playing around with this paint. Like the other day, I was like, man, this is freaking hard. And uh, now that I'm like trying different things, it's actually pretty easy. Here is the final paint scheme. I added a little bit of red on the nose there. It looks freaking awesome, dude. I'm so stoked with how that looks. I painted around the eye a little bit black as well. So let's go ahead and add the eye real quick and the paint and the eyes will be done. What do y'all think, red eye? I think the red eye will be sick. We're gonna go with a red eye. That is sick. I love it, I love it. And there is the finished freaking product. Oh my god, that looks amazing. That, <laughs> I love it. It looks so sick. I don't know, um, I mean, it's kind of resembling a shad. Kind of, kind of. I'll take it. <laughs> but, uh, that's pretty freaking sick, man. I am digging that a lot. I also, as you can see here, I painted some hooks red. Just because I didn't have any red hooks, and I want red hooks on it. That paint job came out amazing. Added a red belly to it, added some black around the eyes, got the shad dot there, some chartreuse, that line, and scales. I mean, it looks freaking awesome. For this being my second lure ever, it's amazing, especially compared to this. I mean, this ain't bad, all right? I, I was happy with this. I still am happy with this. But seeing this being the second one, the paint job is so, so much better. And it's not like oversized either. I got, I was way more comfortable with this one, my first ever one, I was worried about the wood being too thin and breaking off. But I gained the confidence building this one. And I made this one the right size. It's not too fat. I mean, it is looking freaking awesome. I need to seal it up and then add the treble hooks onto it and it is done. I need to go get some actual like hardener sealer. I'm just sealing it with more layers of super glue, which is probably not the right thing to do. But that's all I got right now, all right? I mean, if the lures keep coming out this awesome and getting better and better, then uh, I definitely want to keep doing this and definitely want to go get the right stuff for it. So.